Hi, welcome back to My High Plains Life. It is September 28th, 2018. This is episode 46, and I'm your host, Danielle. You can find me as Danny Girl Co. on Ravelry and Instagram. I have a lot to talk about today, and that's mostly because it's been a while. Not gonna apologize, I just life, you know? I do have FOs, whips, and spinning to show you, and a ton of new acquisitions. I kind of said bye bye, budget, <laughs> for August, September, October, November. <laughs> I spent my hobby budget in, well, not one fell swoop, but pretty much two fell swoops. So, Let's get started. Beginning with On the Needles. I do have two FOs to show you, and they're both completely new to you. So the first object I have, I believe I did mention it last time. It was a, a mystery test knit, a super secret test knit for one of my uh, knit group friends and she submitted it to Knitty and it did not uh, get picked up for one of their patterns so now she can it is up and available on Ravelry this is the Aunt Maggie's Cowl by Shiloh Weir w I've linked to it in the show notes and it's a beautiful pattern. I had a great time test knitting it and it went really quick. There was one stitch, like obviously you can tell there's some cool texture in there. There was one stitch I wasn't quite sure how to do and all she had to do was say, you know, like, and it makes a yarn over this way. And I'm like, oh, boom, light bulb. And everything went along smoothly for there. This is designed to use a pan spun, which I love because I have a ton of 150, 200 yard skeins of hand spun that I have no clue what to do with. And this uh, was one of her answers to that. I love it. I love cowls. I do. I probably wear them more than... Um anything else because I don't have to struggle to keep them to stay on and that's what keeps you warm you know you keep your neck warm and you're good so this is designed to be a single wrap cowl versus like the long drapey cowls that you can flip around twice because again she's thinking of hand spun yardage which I love and this is alpaca yarn that I had hand spun. It's a Vaughn alpaca. And so soft. So soft. And I actually still have some left. I probably, I had more than I thought I did. So I don't know what I'll do with it. Maybe, I don't think I have enough for a matching hat. But maybe if I uh, put it together with another yarn another hand spun I can use this as the body of the hat and the other yarn is the brim so who knows but it's really gotten me thinking about how to use my hand spun which I have a whole <laughs> ah, there we go I have a whole bin and a half full of hand spun that's just waiting to be used. I have used my hand spun. Previously, I have another cowl. I have a sweater that I've made. Um, but again, I don't, that's not the first thing I think about is reaching towards my hand spun. So I'd really like to change that paradigm. Especially since I do love spinning so much and the amount of hand spun I have will hopefully only increase. So, gotta think of ways to use it. This is warm. <laughs> Alpaca. So, 
My first finished object is my Aunt Maggie's Cow by Shiloh Weir. Again, beautiful texture stitch. Um, it's really easy, simple, repetitive, easy uh, to memorize. You know, and you know, and you just go boop and get it to the width or depth that you want and bind off. And again, it was quick and had a lot of fun doing that. And you can find that pattern on Ravelry and she has it up available for free at the moment. So highly recommend you go out and get that. My second finished object you have not seen at all because I started them September 5th, 6th, first day of football. <laughs> Thursday night, football, kickoff. And these are for the Down Cellar Studio 2018 Pigskin Party. I love it. I love Boston Jen. She has such an interesting podcast to listen to. Her Instagram feed is gorgeous. And, and I have a blast doing the pigskin party every year. This is my third year participating. There's tons of prizes, uh, some really great sponsors who have provided discount codes, um, exclusive items, and prizes. And it's just always fun to see what everybody's making. So these are out of Biscott biscotti biscotti and c whatever yarn sock yarn Ooh, oh, upside down in the cheshire cat colorway this is lumos which is it has a fire star in it can't quite tell but it's green awesome and without thinking about it your Seattle Seahawk colors and I knitted them in my Broncos bag <laughs> which is a new acquisition so mm, budget item number one um I used just a Zetron trekking undyed yarn and dog hair for the heels toes and cuffs because I wanted it um, to not break up the striping and, sorry Rolo, and I also was hoping to stretch the yarn out a little further. I thought my legs were longer than they were. They're actually not that tall, but um, I still have 150 yards, I think, of this left which will be great for a pair of shorty socks especially if I use the white uh, trekking for heels and toes again so awesome I did the OMG heel spacious OMG heel on these and I'm kind of wishing I'd done an afterthought heel I just mm, yeah and I use the Kick in the Pants pattern by Lollipop Yarns. It's a free pattern on Ravelry because I love self-striping yarn, but I'd, you know, you get a little tired of it. So I thought I'd switch it up. The pattern is lovely. It is designed and will definitely work better with stripes that are the same width, consistent widths and at least a four stripe repeat. These stripes are not the same width. As you can tell, there's only like one gray, goes dark gray, light gray, white, light gray, dark gray, and then you get into the turquoise and green. The green stripe had the widest repeat. I think it, it did have like three or four rows. And so instead of doing the pattern, the slip stitch pattern on every color change, I just did it when it turned green. Because as I started down on the toe of my foot, those short rows, it looks funny when you start having those slip stitches go up. Yeah, I just didn't like the way that looked. I was not gonna rip it out because I, 
don't like frogging. But I did change the way I did the pattern and made it only into the green stripe for the slip stitches. And I was much happier with that. So they fit great. They're mine. That is all for my FOs. Get ready for the whips. I have... Um, these are all projects you've seen before. And it's mostly because I was working on the cowl and those socks that not much got accomplished on my other whips. But if I knit on it, I'm showing it. So these are my not so vanilla vanilla socks that ended up being vanilla again. Um, they're for my dad. And I did try uh, the syncopation sock pattern on them. It just does not show up in this yarn because it's kind of fuzzy. So I said, screw wasting my time with a textured pattern. And I just went back to vanilla. So I, again, used a spacious OMG heel in it. And I've got the whole foot done and a little bit of the leg. And I'm just going to, I think it might add some increases. I am at 64 stitches on a US one and a half, which is a 2.5 millimeter. And I'm not sure. So I think I'll just try it on, even though the foot will be too long for me. I think I'll just try it on and see how it fits up the leg and add in increases uh, if I think I need them. So a little bit more done on the sock. Yay. I have... Everything's down here on the floor beside me, so. I have done some more work on my prayer shawl. And still looks the same. You know, just uh, the rows get longer every time I go back. So I've done about another inch or two on this. It's just a plain garter stitch triangular shawl. And this is where acrylic has its uses because I don't know who this is going to go to and I can't send care instructions with it. And you want something that's easy and washable. So acrylic it is. And I'm getting really tired of working on this because I only do it in bursts mainly uh, around when I have the prayer shell meetings, but this has been dragging on for a while now. So I think I'm going to put some time into it at home and get this knocked off the needles so I can start something new. And that something new is definitely going to be crocheted because that... I think we'll go a lot faster for charity knitting or charity shawls. So crochet. Okay, so prayer shawl number three. And one of my favorite whips, my Runa cardigan by Gudrun Johnston. I'm loving this. I have, I tried it on as I went and the sleeves are great you know that's decreasing appropriately the length is good it's all gonna fall off my lap so here it is you can see where I've gotten my sleeves down there about to the elbow and I'm marking the decreases I've got them going I'm not knitting them two at a time, but I am knitting them concurrently. And I have one on my carbons and one on my zings in a size seven. So I'm, I'm hoping there won't be a difference because I'm using different needles, but I am loving these zings. 
They are so smooth. I think I'm going to buy more. I'm just adding them to my interchangeable set. So, um, loving my cardigan. And the weather is cooling down enough that I might be able to wear it soon when I finish it. Um, although this is going to be one heavy cardigan. <laughs> it's going to be nice. So, I would not say I'm on Sleeve Island, but I'm in Sleeve Peninsula. Sleeve is Isthmus? Isthmus? Sure. Uh, slow and steady. Still interesting. I don't feel like I've been slogging along forever, so yay. The reason this has not gotten as much time into it as previously is because I have been trying to do projects for the DCS pigskin party and whips don't count. Anything started before September 5th. So I'm hoping there will be an interception or something where we can finish a whip and have it count for points because this is going to be a lot of yardage. But until then, I'll just slow and steady. And again, I'm loving it. Loving the yarn, loving the pattern, loving my new zings. So uh, that is my last whip. I have had some spinning and that, oh, my nose itches, sorry, fiber in the air. I have done some spinning. I made, but this requires me to show you one of my acquisitions. I, hold on. Bought a blending board. So excited. Look at this. It's from Daisy Fiber Company, but I bought it from Howard Brushworks on Etsy, and they sell the Daisy Fiber Company seconds. So what it means is somewhere on here, there is a small flaw. And the only thing that I have managed to figure out is right there where they've put in the screw, there's a little bitty nick in the wood. That's the only thing that I can find <laughs> off or wrong or marred about this blending board. I love it. So what had been putting me off in the past was the price and they're all fairly evenly. You know, there's nothing that's too crazy out there. But, you know, that was happy two months budget. So... They had great prices on this because it was a second. So I got this. It has the leg, I guess you'd call. So you can put it into either of the bolts, screws, hexes. I don't know what you call them. Either of those. So you can either angle it up or you can have it so you're sitting it between your legs. Um, makes it really functional. So it comes with the leg and two dowels for pulling off your Rolex. I also bought, this is considered a second too, the uh, little brush to smooth down the fiber. And had so much fun. I love it. Um, so I made some Rolex with the rest of the fiber that had been used to make the Neapolitan ice cream Rolex, the pink and brown and white. <laughs> and so I took what was left of that fiber and blended it up and made myself some more Rolex. A little bit of a learning curve. <laughs> and I spun those up. And I learned a bit about my blending. I did not blend some of the fiber as well as it should have. 
there's some that's a little more red than the pink. Can you see that pink on the end? And I should have blended that with the white fiber better to get a more diluted shade. And my brown and my white, I kind of blended those too much together. So, but it's still, so I did this all on one bobbin. And what I'm going to do is put this back on my wheel and then take the end and basically cake it up on uh, my ball winder and use it as a center pull ball and like a plying ball and just two ply it together from each end. I'm hoping it doesn't get tangled up in the cake. And we'll see what it looks like. And that way also the first row, row lags that I spun will be plied against the second batch of row legs that I spun, hopefully blending everything together even more. So nothing stands out too vividly, hopefully. That is my spinning. This is one of my favorite acquisitions, a new blending board. <sighs> I'm part of the club now, people. Love it. Okay. So that was a blast. Well, now that I have a new blending board, what do I need but fiber to go with it to blend? So I have many acquisitions. I went with some friends the first weekend in Sept September 6th-ish, I think. Um, to the Salida Fiber Festival. Salida is about two hours south of here along the Arkansas River. It's a gorgeous little town and the Fiber Festival is held at the Riverside Park which is kind of the city center and they had quite a lot of vendors. It's still a small fiber festival but they had some well-known vendors, quite a list of them, about 60, 65 vendors, I'd say. And anything from ranchers bringing in full fleeces and selling them, you know, like the entire fleece, to fiber mills, to alpaca breeders, a lot of fiber. Uh, like I said, anywhere from the, you know, like unwashed fleece to the processed and hand dyed fiber braids to yarns, hand dyed yarns. Um, and I did pretty good. Knowing that I just bought my blending board, I tried to stick to fibers and I did. I got da -da, a handful. Uh, this is supposed to be one ounce. It's a heavy ounce of locks. Look at those and all different colors and I just got to pick and they're so soft. Falling all over. So I can use these as part of my blending. And if you have a blending board, sorry for the crinkling, you need some Firestar, folks. So I'm not taking it out because it just kind of flies away. Rainbow of colors and beautiful and well-priced. So I got that. And so those are the like specialty fibers to add into my blend. And the base, sis, sorry, this is going to be loud, ah, crinkly, is I bought bumps of merino. I just, um, one of the vendors had just a wall of baskets with different colored merino fiber in it, and you could just buy it by the ounce, which is what I did, so that I could get a whole, look at these colors, just a whole variety 
of different colors. Look! Of merino. And they're not really showing up great. So I think I got 12, maybe 12 different colors. And just am really excited. So I've got a place to start. This is on my merino. I obviously have, I obviously, I know I obviously have. I have some undyed alpaca fiber. I've got some white alpaca. I've got some white Shetland, some white um, BFL, and some soy silk fiber. So I have some fibers already that I can also use in addition to blend with these. So I am so excited to be creating some of my own Rolex now. So I try to step out of my com color comfort zone a little. Um, obviously there's a lot of blues and greens, but I also got pink and purple and some orange. So I'm trying to push myself a little bit, but I still want it to be something that I will enjoy spinning. So yay, crinkling gone. So that was the fiber that I purchased with the intent of using it with my blending board. I also purchased some more fiber. Hi, I'm at a fiber festival. Of course you have to. This is from Greenwood Fiber. Works hand dyed roving. This is an 8020 BFL nylon in the colorway Arizona. And I loved it. One, um, I bought this with the intent of spinning for socks. So I want to do a three ply. I know a four ply would be better, but a three ply is more realistic for yardage that I'll get. Um, so I chose a BFL nylon blend because I thought that would hold up really well, well for socks, especially Oh my God, trash man's here. Especially if I only ended up with a three ply. And the colorway is beautiful. I kind of think of, you know, an Arizona sunset a little um, with adobe houses and um, spiral cactus. So, Love the colorway, love the base, bought it with the intention of spinning for socks. So this has a plan and we will see, obviously I haven't started yet, so we will see uh, how that goes. Hopefully I will be able to spin consistently enough and get enough yardage that it'll work for knitting socks. I have smaller feet, so I don't need the full 400 yards, obviously, but 253 is what I really need. I also purchased this from Retold Yarns. I've never seen them before. I love their colorway choices. And I loved her colorway names. This is called There Is No Try. And as soon as I saw that, I was like, ah, Yoda. Um, it's a 75-25 superwash merino nylon, 100 grams. And I like the gray. I'm not really a gray person, but it just kind of called to me. So I purchased this also. And then my favorite fiber purchase at Salida was from the 100th Sheep. It's Peggy Doney and um, she's actually local, a local spinner and dyer here. And this is called Violet Headed Hummingbird. Oh my God, isn't it gorgeous? 
Yes, it's got my blues and greens, but it's got this beautiful flash of violet. And it's just crazy colors. Bold and so saturated. Um, I love it. And this is a six ounce braid of super fine merino. I have no idea what I'm gonna do with it. And I, it will probably become like a hat or a cowl, maybe a matching set, just so that I can have something uh, that's right up close to my face because I love these colors. Okay. So again, that's from the 100th sheet. They weren't my only purchases. They were all my fiber purchases. I only did two yarns and one was a sock blank. I've never knit from a sock blank before. So here's my sock blank. When I saw it in the sun, I initially thought it was blue and orange. So I'm like, yay, Bronco colors. But it's more purple, <laughs> purple and orange. And this is from Melting Pot Fibers. And it's an 8020 Superwash Merino Nylon. And that's kind of my favorite sock blend. I know with Merino, more nylon holds up better, but I just like the feel of an 8020 blend better than a 7525. So it's instead of my Broncos socks, these are gonna be my Halloween socks. And uh, I don't know if I'll cast them on for this year's Halloween or next year, but very excited. I love uh, the speckles. Look how they got just beautiful speckles so that when this is un unwound, I guess, and knit up, you will, like you will get those pops of purple. And I am very excited to see how that went. I had one last purchase and that was from a new indie dyer uh, that I'd never heard of before. She's actually from Colorado in the Denver area, Lakewood, I think. And it is called Six and Seven Fiber. I love her colorways, even the ones that were outside my favorite color wheel spoke to me just because of the way she uh, put the colors together and, you know, shaded things together. They were all really gorgeous. And I loved her themes. She had um, like an Anne of Green Gables uh, theme with a whole uh, developed, you know, series of colorways for that. And Harry Potter, you know, um, but this is actually called Emu Egg, and this is a Cordell, Superwash Cordell Nylon, and that's another thing that I loved about this dyer, is she uses some interesting bases. Uh, she's the only one I think I saw with a Cordell base there. I could be wrong. Um, but you know, she's not just the Merino nylon or even the BFL nylon. Uh, you know, she did some, some really interesting bases and I appreciated that. This is called Emu Egg and it looked great in the skein, but oh my God, can you see how that is going to be just such a lovely variegated yarn? It's beautiful with these pops of blue and gold and brown and they're just oh, can't wait to knit with this and more on that later <laughs> so i again love the dyer six and seven yarns love her variety of bases and just the way she puts together color. So that I think is somebody to keep an eye on. Again, she's been doing it less than a year. She's a new dyer. So I like uh, keeping an eye on, especially dyers more local to me. 
So we'll see how she does. And my last acquisition was not at the Salido Fiber Festival, but a online purchase. And it was very sad. Totally understand, but uh, Lara of Jinx Yarn has decided to quit dyeing. It's for health reasons. Totally understand, not blaming her. Just really sad to see her go because she was one of the first indie dyers that I ever followed. And I love her color sense. I love her self-striping. I do have some of her other colorways. Um, I had Christmas ornaments that I've knit socks out of before and uh, another colorway. But for her last update, I really wanted to make another purchase, you know, last chance. I was hoping to get either her gingerbread house or one of her Halloween colorways is called Abandoned Carnival. Love them. Kicking myself in the pants for not purchasing them sooner because every time I see them, I go, oh, I love that. Um, of course, they were already sold out. And I, like, had my alarm set and went on as soon as she posted, you know, and things went live. Um, and I still missed out. Things sold out so quickly. But what I did get is the... Glitz Sock Self-Striping in the colorway Naughty or Nice. And it's a kind of a gradiated greens and a gradient red uh, with black stripes in between. And it knits up really cool. So I'm not, you know, like, I'm glad I got this. I'm just really wishing I'd been able to get a gingerbread house and abandoned carnival also. So if anybody out there has some in their stash and is looking to trade, hit me up. Leave a note in the comments. I chose to do a video podcast instead of an audio podcast is because while I have a vivid imagination, it's never quite the same not being able to see the projects people are working on or the yarn they're talking about. And I just love getting a chance to look at the colorways and how things are knitting up. And that's why I chose to do a video podcast. So I hope you've enjoyed looking at all my whips and finished objects and my acquisitions. I, have. I haven't been stocking anything, but I do have some projects in the pipeline. And that is mainly, yes, I've been sucked into doing the 2018 Stephen West Shawl MCAL. Oh my god! I... Stephen West is kind of somebody who I either love his designs or hate them. There's no, you know, shoulder shrugging. Eh, it's okay. It tends to lean strongly one way or the other. So I have not done a mystery knit along of his before, simply because I've been burned on a mystery knit along. You know, I was like, hi, you're paying for a pattern you don't even know if you're going to like. So I haven't participated in the past. I loved his earth and sky, liked the doodler, not sure if I would have worn it much, loved speckle and pop, loved marled magic. I just, I was like, okay, I'm going to do this this year. Also, the name drew me in. It's called Texture Time. So it's supposed to be a variety of different textures and I'm really into that right now. So planning for the project requires five yarns. A main color 
and a contrasting color one, two, three, and four. Contrast color number four in the kits Stephen West has made up is a melted Surrey alpaca. alpaca. So it has a fuzzy texture to it. Um, again, playing on the texture time theme. So my goal was to use stash yarns. At least three of the five skeins had to be from stash. And I think I did a really good job. I took in a whole handful, like I just threw stuff in my bag and took it to knit group and th dumped it all out on the table and said, hope, this is what I'm thinking. What do you guys think? And we came up with something pretty good, but now I'm having second thoughts, of course. Um, that is one of my favorite things about belonging to a knit group that meets every week is that I can get great feedback from them. So I ended up only purchasing one skein of yarn for this M cow. Uh, and that is this. And it's a Cascade Heritage Silk. Uh, fingering weight. Oh, that's not quite showing up right. It's actually more teal. It's not quite as blue. It's more teal. We'll see. And that is the only skein I bought. And I think this is going to be my main color because this provides the right contrast and coordinating with the other yarns to pull it all together, I think. So these are the yarns I had in my stash. These are Yarn Rehab. And this is a beautiful tonal. It's gold and orange and copper. And like a butter yellow in parts. And it's just, it's a gorgeous tonal. This is another Yarn Rehab. And it's another tonal. It's kind of reds and oranges. Or reds. There's a splash of orange in there. But mostly... red and it, there's like some burgundy in there too mm, that's not well, okay so there were those two tonal skeins and then the turquoise and i've had this in my stash for a while now because i love the colors and i had absolutely no idea what to do with it because i thought socks would just be too bland you know, this yarn needed something fancier than socks. This is Tricked Out You. I love this. Uh, there is no name, colorway name. It wasn't on the label. Look at this. Is that not beautiful? The skein was pretty caked up. It's gorgeous. You can see all the different shades and the turquoise and the copper and the gold and the green. It's just beautiful. Loving it. So here we go. Main color. Contrast color one. Ah! Contrast color two. Contrast color three. Look at how those all go together. This matches some of the shades in here, some of the shades in here, in here, and in here. I think it all just gets pulled together really well. So these I'm set on. <laughs> Main color, contrast colors one, two, and three. Contrast color number four. I was so excited because I just bought this, this emu egg colorway from six and seven fiber. Look at that. It goes beautiful with the turquoise. It pulls together with that. Um, so this was a possibility for my contrast color number four. 
because I don't didn't want to have to buy another skein of yarn although I allowed myself if I needed to and I was really excited about using this in something so possibility and then I looked through my stash and remembered I had this handmaiden uh, mohair silk blend that I pulled out from a cowl that I decided it did not work on. And look at that. Do I do this, which has the additional texture Stephen West recommended? Is it too much? Because it's got more yellow tone than a gold. Too much? Or should I stick with my variegated or should I save the emu egg for another project? Ah, it starts October 5th. What do I do? That's part of the fun of a Stephen West knit along is picking your colors. And so, I don't know. I have not knit up a swatch yet. Of course. And I think that is something that I'm just going to have to do. Just break down, knit up a swatch so I can figure out whether or not I should be using this skein or the emu egg. So the only thing I've really been stocking is colorway combinations. Uh, and Stephen West put together like 30, 35 different kits for sale. And it just runs the gamut of color combos from neutrals to neutrals with a pop to crazy wild, but it still coordinates. Stephen West, folks. I have nothing for under the needle in the garden or in the bee yard. <laughs> Off topic, I've pretty much already discussed the cows I am doing with you, the pigskin party cow, and I have... Uh, made it to second base on the batter up cow with Christy of Anna's Knit. I need to post some more of my projects in there so that uh, I can qualify for prizes. That runs through the uh, World Series. So still have a little more time to get in there. I have started ordering meals from HelloFresh. So I totally blame this on Jasmine of the Knit More Girls for talking me into it. I listen to their podcast and she talks about it all the time. They're one of her sponsors. So I used their code and joined HelloFresh. We've gotten meals two weeks now and so far have Love them. The food's been great. Everything's been really organized and easy. So, for the foreseeable future, we will continue doing so. It has been really enjoyable to cook together with my husband. I would like to thank you for uh, catching up with me and my life on the high plains. And I hope to see you again soon. You can find me as Danny Girl CO on Ravelry and Instagram. Don't forget to join our, our Ravelry group. Show notes can be found at www.myhighplainslife.blogspot.com. Thanks for watching. Bye.